In this video, I want to share with you how I structure a .NET solution. First, let's take a look at the different layers of the solution. We have from inner to outer, we have core business, use cases, plugins, and UI. This is very similar to Jason Taylor's clean architecture, just with different names. But my architecture has drawn some ideas from Robert Martin's clean architecture. You can see entities, use cases, UI, whereas Jason Taylor's architecture is slightly simpler. When I combine the concepts from both of them, I got my own version of clean architecture, which I have been using for many years in very large project with good success. That's why I want to share with you in this video. So from inner to outer, we have core business use cases, plugins and UI. Let's talk about them and then we'll jump into Visual Studio and show you an example project. So the core business here is basically the same as the domain layer that Jason Taylor has. So this layer contains the business specific entity and entity validation rules. The key thing here is that it is business centric instead of application centric. For example, if you're dealing with an e-commerce business, this layer may contain entities like order, order line items, products. And if you're dealing with a gaming business, this layer may have entities like game characters, game environment, character narrations, and so on and so forth. So whether you're implementing an application as a web application or mobile application or Windows application, it doesn't actually affect these entities in this layer. Even if you implement the business with just paper and pencil, the concepts of these entities and their validation rules inside the core business layer here still exist. It's not actually affected by how you implement your application. And that's why I tend to call it core business. For me, I'm creating an application for a business. I think when I call it core business, it's more obvious than the word domain, but it doesn't really matter. You can call it anything. And the next layer is the use case layer. This layer implements the logic that represents the interactions between the end users and the application for each and every single use case in the application. However, this layer doesn't contain any code interact with external systems like a database or files or APIs, even if your application depends upon, for example, file systems or database. Inside the use cases layer, you will find no code that is used to contact those external systems. It is purely for implementing the logic for each and every single use case. The only layer that the use case layer is dependent upon is the core business layer. Now let's talk about the plugin layer here. The code for interacting with external systems is actually encapsulated in this layer. Whether you're using just the memory of a computer or file system of a computer or an external database system, the code here deals with those systems. And why do I call it plugin? Because it actually works as a plugin that is plugging those functionalities into the inner layer, which is the use case layer, so that the use case layer all of a sudden gains access to the external systems. And then finally, we have the UI layer. Of course, this layer is our actual application. Right? It can be an MVC application or a .NET MAUI application or Blazor application, whatever application you choose. But it only contains the UI related code and it relies on the use case layer and the core business layer for business logic. So let's jump into Visual Studio to see a simple solution here. From inner to outer, we have core business layer, use cases layer, plugins layer, and the UI layer here. As you can see, this application is an e commerce application. Therefore, inside the core business layer, you can see I actually have different folders separate them. This is the models, which is basically the entities. And if you look at the look at them, it's pretty simple. We have order and we have line items and we have products. And the services are basically the related validation rules here. Some people don't like putting the validation rules inside the core business layer. I think it's okay. In this solution, I chose to put the validation rules right here. You can see that we are validating customer information, making sure that none of the fields are actually empty. And then we have this validate creating order. We're making sure that the order is not null. It has line items and each line items follow certain rules here. And then we are validating customer information as well. 
So as I mentioned, this layer contains the entities and its related validation rules. And these rules don't actually change whether you are creating a web application or mobile application or a, a smart device application. It doesn't really matter. You still have these entities to use. And that's why this it is in the innermost layer, which is the core of the business as well as the core of the application. Now let's go to the next layer, which is the use case layer. So here, if you check the dependencies here, you can see that it's only dependent on the core business layer. It's not dependent on any other layers. And inside here, well, I have some folders to separate them. This particular project have a admin portal and customer portal. So I put use cases under each one of those folders. And let's check out the customer portal here. We have different folders. I'm separating the use cases by screens. You can choose to separate them in different ways in this project. I just separate them in, dif um, in different screens. So it's good for maintainability because when you open it up, you know that you're looking at which screen and then which use case, right? For example, this one has a very simple logic here. We're just grabbing the product from a data store here, but which data store we don't know. We're just relying on a interface. What is this interface? It's basically can be considered as imagination because there's no implementation, right? It's an imagination of a certain functionality. And then we're just based on this imagination, we're implementing our logic here. Although this logic is very simple, we're just grabbing the data. Okay? But if you look at this one, it's slightly more complicated. It's depending on three different types of imagination, okay? And then here it's getting product, it's adding to the shopping cart, and then it performs some kind of process here. But still, these are just imaginations. Inside this use cases, there's no implementations of these imaginations that are defined by the interfaces. And that's why I say that the use case has a clear separation between business logic and the code for contacting the external systems. So those imaginations are defined as interfaces under this plugins folder. So I have I product repository that has these imaginary functionalities. And then we have order repository that have these imagined functionalities. And then now let's move on to the next layer, which is the plugin layer. Well, the plugin layer as we can have different plugins. That's why I have this folder and I have different projects under this folder. This whole project started with just the in-memory data store, which is the hard-coded. And then when the project becomes bigger, I started creating this data store.sql.dapper, which is a plugin that contacts the SQL server by using Dapper. If you want to use Entity Framework Core, then you can create another one. So the point here is that with the plugin-based clean architecture here, your development is very flexible. You don't have to determine whether your system is based on files or databases or API endpoints. You can start with small and flexible in-memory data store. And also in-memory data store is very good for unit testing because it's just faster than the SQL server or API endpoints. And then for integrated testing, you might rely on SQL server, right? And for production, of course, you rely on SQL server or database or anything else. But you can start with something simple. You can have multiple plugins which can be injected into the use cases layer so that the use cases layer can still contact the external systems but it doesn't use its own code it uses the plugin layers code to do that and then finally we have our ui layer which implements those ui components one of the most important thing in the ui layer here is that it by itself implements dependency injection. So therefore the plugin based architecture here is actually relying on the UI layer to dependency inject these plugins into the use cases. So here, if you open it up, this is actually an older solution. Therefore we have startup. In newer solutions, we only have the program.cs. Nervousless, we have a place where we do dependency injection. For example, here is under configure services method here, and then we're doing dependency injections. We're injecting these plugins implementations into the dependency injection container. In turn, these implementations are injected into our use cases layer.
right here. And it's used by the use case layer to contact its external systems. There are many different ways to implement clean architecture. This is just a way that I personally prefer. It doesn't mean that it's the best way to implement it. You can definitely adapt the clean architecture in any way that you want that is reasonable and convenient. But for me, I like to combine both Robert Martin's and Jason Taylor's way because I found that the use case driven clean architecture is sort of a combination between vertical slice architecture and clean architecture because you're really separating business logic into those use cases. One of the other benefits of this is that when you look at the functional design and look at each one of those use cases, you can just come into the use case layer and find its implementation. But if you don't separate the functionalities into use cases, then when you look at use case in a functional design, it's just harder to locate its implementation in the project's code. And then here, I just call it plugin because it is a plugin. By using the name, it is clear to the developers that these projects are basically injected in the inner layers. All right, that's how I structure my done as solutions. And hopefully this is going to bring some good ideas to you to help you to structure your done solutions in your own project. And if you're still here, please don't forget to give me a like to help me to grow my YouTube channel. Thank you. I'll see you in my next video.